Hey, yo, welcome back to the Casual Marks Podcast. We're running through AEW Dynamite New Year Smash, talking over the last couple of segments. We got a couple of videos up already We're talking about the rest of the card, so be sure you go and check those out. You can hear all about our thoughts and opinions. In case you're coming from those and you're catching up with us, I'm the Mark. I'm the Casual. And right now we're going into... Let's see, is it the Chris Tatlander and Sky Blue match next? Or well, we can do it. Chronologically, it was the Christian and, and Edge face oh, okay. to face. Let's go ahead and talk about Since that Christian right Christian was quick. sitting there all night waiting on Adam Copeland. Don't want to make him wait any longer. That's sorry I said Edge, even though I'm not sorry. Lawsuit. <laughs> uh, realistically, I think it's an interesting way to try and be like, Ooh, all night we're going to have these two come face to face for this discussion, promo, whatever you want to call it. And then what ended up happening instead is that as soon as Adam Copeland came in, he started throwing hands. We had a big pull apart brawl, but it was in the hallways, kind of awkwardly placed, which isn't necessarily like an AEW issue. That's pretty common for any kind of like pull apart brawls where it's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Adam Copeland broke free and went back after him, but some guy in the suit had to step in. Yeah, I couldn't tell who that was. I'm remember. just going to kayfabe that it was Wardlow. Uh, I'm he thinking that Tony Khan needs to fire uh, Adam Copeland and Christian because of how much danger he was in backstage. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's a comment. That's a comment. <laughs> it was just good. Edge or Adam Copeland versus Christian, but I thought it was going to be awesome. Has kind of bored me, and not it's not even about Adam Copeland versus Christian, and I don't know, just kind of uninterested in the. I'm definitely feud. still interested in the feud, but I'm just confused why they're making it. The focus has been off of them. I I feel like it's more on, and I guess they're trying to push young talent and everything, but uh, I don't know, Nick Wayne. I do. He's a little slimy heel. I guess that's working, but. There you go. I just if don't. you hate them, that's what it needs. <laughs> yeah. But is it X Pac Heat or is it Heat? But the only reason I think it's X Pac Heat is because he's not good at stopping himself from smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump into the main event. Or not the main event. Yeah, excuse so me. We got Blue. the semi main event first. TBS champion Chris Statland. Oh, excuse me. Former TBS champion Chris Statlander going up against. Wait, was she the Sky champion Blue. tonight? No, no, no. She oh, was okay. the champion before Julia Hart. Oh, I was about to say. I didn't notice no belt. Uh, overall, I thought this match was going to get cut for time. Same. I did not think it was only we were as it did. we were real close to the end when it, it started. It came up. on at like nine forty or nine forty five, even. We're Eastern specific time for anyone wondering, and it man did not get cut short. <laughs> And it was a good performance from both of them. Yeah, it was. I was actually I was, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, was, Sky Blue being 24 and being this. Oh, she that young? I didn't yeah. know she was that young. You think that's crazy. Julia Hart's 22. Huh. Why was she wearing that black dress? She reminded me of uh, Winona the Rider in Beetlejuice. I, I don't know anything about Beetlejuice. But she's wearing that because she just joined Julia Hart, House of Black, Sky oh, Black, all that kind of stuff. Oh, is she now Sky Black? No, she should be though. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, huh, that's what we'll call her on this channel <laughs> from this exact moment forward. She will be. This Sky will Black. be known as the Genesis. This is the Julia. Genesis. <laughs> this is the beginning of this moment <laughs> of Sky Black. And um, I don't know if there's like a respectful way for me to say this comment. There's, there's just a lot of ass in this match. <laughs> God, <laughs> like. Uh, I I understand that there's a lot more going on in the match, but it just to me felt like it was constantly a focus of even on the cameras. I don't know Why if that's been intentional. Why it's what's on the TV. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's intentional by AEW to get camera shots like that, or if it just. Well, we know how Tony Khan is... feels about women's wrestling. So. Oof, got him. <laughs> I've always wanted a women's continental classic, but I know they won't give them that much time. If I have the option between women's wrestlers or Kenny Omega, Kenny Omega is going to win every time. Well, you never know. Kenny Omega <laughs> did have to fight that uh, nine-year-old girl, and that was just a draw. So, Regardless, really good match. And at the end of it, 
uh, started to really show that the TBS championship has a much more interesting scene than the actual AEW Women's Championship. Yeah, it does. Because we had Julia Hart distracting Chris Statlander, a uh, code blue off the top rope, gets the pin for Sky Black to win. And then immediately after they continue the attack on Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale makes the save. Yeah. Sky Black and Julia Hart are falling back, but Abaddon comes out to confront them. There's a Abaddon lot of moving parts. Abaddon is a part. weird character. She freaks me out. Hey, man. Living dead girl. <laughs> I don't know about this. She's going to be at uh, World's End, isn't she? Yes, she will be facing Julia Hart. Okay, that's a weird one. Um, that'll be a dark, spooky match for all the goth girl lovers It's going to be there. really good for Halloween. <laughs> but uh, Chris Tatlander reminds me of Raquel. She's a freaking... Oh, nerd. yeah. No, she's a tank, bro. Yeah. She's super strong. Who was that Leon Ruff-looking fellow that was... Um... All right. <laughs> All right. That is Stokely Hathaway. And he's like a manager. He used to be with Diamond Mine at NXT. He got cut. Then he came and he was part of the firm. The he firm was on, didn't what last is Diamond Mine on NXT? Diamond Mine is the original group of the Creeds, Damon Kemp, um, was he, he Roderick was, Strong. He was a wrestler? No, no, no. He was uh, their manager. Oh, I was about to say. Yeah, he was their manager. Okay. And then he got cut and went over to AEW. It wasn't bad with commentary. I no, no, know. no. He's actually a wonderful character yeah. overall, and he has a very entertaining Twitter page. Does he? Mm-hmm. Someone actually earlier tweeted about him trying to get in with Chris Statland, and it was that picture of the girl holding up the guy against the <laughs> chain link fence. And he quote tweeted him and said something along the lines of, like, go fuck yourself, at blocked, or something like that. Oh, that guy is hilarious. We need to find that guy that tweeted that. That's hilarious. I'll see if I can find it and put it up on the screen. <laughs> Shout out to that guy for that. That's good right there. It was overall a really entertaining match. I'm a lot more interested in all of those moving parts with those five women than I am with Timeless Tony, Mariah May, and Riho. Yeah, I would agree with that. Even though I do like me some Timeless Tony, but uh, the, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like her, but I don't think Riho is realistically going to win. Yeah. Mariah May hasn't made her in-ring debut yet. I know she's good from her time over in Japan, but... Oh, is that the one everyone was freaking out about that they signed from yes. New Japan? Oh, mm -hmm. and then they made her a Tony Storm stalker. Awesome. I genuinely don't even mind that character, but I'm just it just hasn't kind of progressed enough for me to be like, now I'm really invested in this story. It's kind of weird for everybody to be like, this is the greatest woman in Japan. And it's then... especially weird because they wanted to get her, but from reports, uh, they had no interest in Julia, who is both the PWI and ESPN number two woman in the world. What about um, that girl that looks like Sasha Banks? <laughs> All right, you and your Mercedes Monet slander. I'm not no, I'm, I, I like Mercedes Monet, but I thought that uh, they were talking about getting her in. AEW. They were, they were, and uh, from all the reports I've seen, there were plans for her around the time of AEW All Out. But is that those the Wembley one or is that yes, the, okay. that's the Wembley one. But those plans are no longer in motion. And now she's going to WWE with her pop figures. There are some teases. She could just be working people. <laughs> Who knows? It's like uh, Matt Cordonia. Exactly. You truly never know. <laughs> but yeah, I was really into that whole segment. I really, I think the AEW women's divisions, both for the women's champion and the TBS champion have been doing ecstatically well. Yeah, I I, ecstatically I is a word. But they just don't get a lot of time, it feels like. Well, I know that we were just commenting <laughs> that tonight they got more time than we expected, but maybe they'll that get was some the more time with only the match. Classic. Well, yeah, but maybe we'll get, I mean, kind of classic took up like Probably an, an hour. hour. Yeah. yeah. Then maybe we'll get some more time with that being over for the women, but uh, I hope know. so. Never know with Tony Khan. But what you were saying is what I was trying to say and maybe did not communicate well. That's how I think that the NXT roster should be because you have like a group of that are sitting at the top and then people at the bottom, not at the bottom, but in the middle that you can feel like can jump to the top at any time. But mm. NXT just has that big group at the middle. They don't have the group at the top where okay, the big dogs okay. play. I see that. We're the big dogs. <laughs> I can see that. Hmm. Well, I think we're at about a point of the time where it's going to be best to go ahead and cut this video so we don't draw it on because I got a lot to say about this last segment coming up. 
And it's going to be us talking about the whole AEW Devil segment, everything with MJF and Samoa Joe versus the two uh, Devil Worshippers. Did you want to talk about Cody Rhodes being the mid quarter? I don't know when that was. Oh, <laughs> mm, you know, we'll save that for the next segment. Okay. We'll save that for the next segment. There's a little tease for you guys. I got some <laughs> thoughts on Cody Rhodes as a mid carter. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Be sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us here and on the old uh, Tiki Talk. And we're going to see you guys real soon for that next video. Yeah, comment down below. Let us know how stupid we are. There you go. <laughs> Tell us about all the hate. Thanks for listening.